it. I but I feel I bad at the same time because I feel I'm, bet I'm betraying myself buying this game, saying that I had so so much principles that you guys were a bunch of crooks. You tried to steal from me, and the fact that you got caught and you fixed it after does it remove the fact that you did the shitty thing to begin with, or are you doing what you're expected to do now? Or I had a debate I wanted to do sometimes. Should you uh, review a game and base your, uh, or maybe a piece of art, I would say mostly games because they can be patched, on the state it was at released when they decided it was uh, good enough to take your money for it, or at the state it is right now? I had this debate with No Man's Sky for a long time. Apparently, No Man's Sky now, four years later, is a very awesome game, full of features, is everything that I ever said it was going to be, it's actually in the game now. But it was not when they started releasing it, when they started charging full price for it. And yeah. people had to revolt, had to scream, had to throw big fit for them to actually do something about it. So should they get the praise for saying, oh, they're good, they're good, they listened to their customers and they did the right thing. Or should you say, dude, you promised that, 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 and that. You didn't give it to me. And when I pointed out that you failed what you tell me, now you kind of felt obliged to fix it. Are you good for, I don't know, it's just a big debate for me. You know, I, I completely agree with that. Like, I've still not played No Man's Sky because of those reasons. I was excited for it when it was when it was announced, but mm -hmm. I, I've i been burned so many times by buying brand new games that I won't buy a game upon release anymore. And one of the ones recently um, that hit me the hardest was Cyberpunk. Yeah. Because CD Projekt Red was one of my favorite companies because of the fact that Witcher 3 was a brilliant game. When I bought Witcher 3, I didn't even have any interest in playing it. I just was like, eh, it's on sale. Maybe I'll play it. It's fantasy. Uh, okay. But I opened that up and I found a thick booklet that came with it. Dickers, the soundtrack, which I still listen to, and a poster and all the shit. And I'm like, guys, and free DLC and a thank you card for buying the game. And I was just like, this is a big company and they're doing this shit like <laughs> I'm I'm on board CD Project Red. And so when they were announcing Cyberpunk and I I was just like I'm not into the whole Cyberpunk sort of genre, but I am on board with CD Project Red. Let's see where this goes. Um I just they didn't they didn't give us what we what we needed right off the bat at all. So um, speaking of Cyberpunk, I see two mindsets right now. If you were to so you said you didn't buy it, right? Cyberpunk? Yeah. Technically, no, I didn't buy it, but a good friend of mine bought it for me as a uh, thank you for okay. helping him build a computer. If you were to buy the game today, yeah. do you think it would be seen as uh, encouraging the company with doing shitty behavior, knowing that they can get your money and they just have to work a little bit after to fix it, or you would see it as telling them, thank you so much, you did good, and I'm going to reward you with a, bu a buy-up. Because I refused to buy Cyberpunk for a long time because I was insulted by the way they released the game. And I said, yeah. you know what? You're not going to get my fucking money. It's over. It's over. You, you burned me. I, I Fuck you. I, I'm not going to be part of it. And I caved yeah. in like two months ago it was a big deal on steel i think i got it for 20 bucks and then i have to say i love the game i had a good time playing it i but i feel I bad at the same time because i feel I'm, bet I'm betraying myself buying this game saying that i had so so much principles that you guys were a bunch of crooks you tried to steal from me and the fact that you got caught and you fixed it after does it remove the fact that you did the shitty thing to begin with or are you doing what you're expected to do now or should we give you praise for fixing the thing you screwed up in the first place you know i think it's i think it's a tough argument in 2022 you know if you had the same argument 20 years ago where you're like you you released a game and it was shitty what are they going to do they're not going to be able to do anything because you can't you can't download dlc yeah. like you can't patch it um unless you had a computer then you could patch games but usually they were made by the the players and not necessarily the company. So you could I feel fix like it with those... a Game Shark. Yes, but those companies, I am on board with. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna release a shitty game to me back then when we weren't oversaturated with video games, 
uh, I would be like, no, fuck you. You're, you're as a company, I'm done with you. But in 2022, it's such a hard debate because yeah. Cyberpunk has to stay like they had to stay competitive. You know how many other games came out the same day Cyberpunk did? It is a very competitive market where. I could I could go and play anything I fucking wanted to at this point. There's no reason for me to look at like all these new E3 titles. Um I I can play whatever I want. So if a company is like if we don't put this out, we are going to lose money, we're all going to lose our jobs, like all this stuff. Like I get it. And if they stick behind it and they fix their game and it becomes a better game, I can forgive them for it if they put in the work, but then you have, you have other companies. And the one that comes to mind is the one that uh, our friend Muti likes to play dread hunger where it's, it was a, it's an alpha game pre-release and the, the devs were just butthurt because of the fact okay. that people, people were complaining about their game that they're like, fuck it. We're done. We're going to go on to our next project. I'd be like, I'm done really? with you. I'm oh, never I missed buying that. I missed game. that part. And, and I'm just that I can't forget, you know, if they're going to put in the work, they're going to make the announcement. They're putting employees to work on fixing this game. Then I'm okay with it. Um, Dr. Stifle wants to point out a really hard part about this debate. Do you hate the publisher or do you hate the developer? And I, is it on my end as a customer to make a difference between both? I see a bunch of people making a game together. Uh, I don't think it should be on me as a customer to. So when you go to a restaurant and you get a very, very shitty meal, do you just stop going to that restaurant altogether? Or you tr would just say it's the chef that was shitty and the server was good and I'm still going to find a way to come back to give a little bit of tip to the, to the server because it's not their fault the chef fucked him up. I usually stop going to that place altogether. It's a team. It's a group of people that made something bad. Whoever the fault is, as a customer, I don't think it's on me to try to differentiate. I bought or I got served something bad. I'm just going to go with the big name that's on top of it. They're responsible for it. That's the way I see it. I, I think that's a very, very good analogy about it. Is, is Again, 20 years ago, how many of us could have distinguished between those of a game? Who was the publisher? Who was the developer? I'm sure some of us can. I couldn't. I... Honestly, you told me about Super Mario 64 or anything on the 64. I'd have been like, yeah, Nintendo made it. Not necessarily. It could have been made by another company. Um, didn't matter to me. If the game was shitty, I blamed I blamed who, who I thought was to blame. So uh, I agree with that, that, yeah, it the developers might be getting shit on because the publishers want to push the game out. But at the same time, like, it's it's an it's an entity that I feel has to be... Um, looked at and blamed yeah. for that experience. It depends on who handles the situation the best after the fact. It's almost like uh, the, the kind of discussion we had last week about uh, celebrities doing shitty things. Let's say you are part of a band and it's well known, at least in the band, that let's say the lead singer is a total piece of shit uh, that does very bad things. And as a band member, you know that, but you keep playing with the band for 10 years and when the thing comes out as a big news, uh, it comes out, well, should you be should you be blamed? You knew about it. You still decided to stay here. You're part of the thing. It's not unlike uh, a movie worker that just ends up working on a movie and you end up late. You learn later that, let's say, people on top like J.K. Rowling is a bad person that's saying shitty things. Then you can blame the uh, the the guy that was doing the lightning for the movie because he didn't choose to be there he just he got a job he did his things and it turned out the people on top that he has nothing no linkedin turned out to be pieces of shit so it's very i think yeah. it's very different uh if the the publisher or the developer the developer somehow at some point decided that they would sign a contract with that uh with the publisher they decided they would have a mutual relationship well they even if the publisher they chose fucked them up, they still chose them, right? You know, I, I love the, the bringing it to the debate, and I always like what you have to say, Dr. Steinfeld. I think you bring it definitely a, a unique yeah. perspective to a lot of